What's up everyone? It is Dark Viper. I am here to show you how to make your own pets inside Roblox Studio. They are similar to a lot of the games that you currently see out there. Most of the pets are kind of square like this in cubes. You have a couple options here. You can either get your mesh off of the uh, marketplace or you can make them in Blender directly. So I'm going to show you how to do both. Um, here's how to get a mesh. If you don't, if you don't know how to use Blender, go ahead and go to the marketplace inside Roblox Studio and just do a search for rounded cube and it's under, under meshes, make sure it's the meshes tab and go ahead and just insert that into your project. And you can see here right away, you can actually change the colors of your cube. Um, you can also change the different materials. So for example, neon, but I'm gonna show you also how to make it inside uh, Blender directly. So there's a couple options here. Uh, make sure you add a cube to your project. And then what you're gonna do here is you're going to duplicate that cube so that we can actually shrink wrap to it. So I'm gonna show you how to shrink wrap the other cube. This is just a temporary duplicate, so don't worry, there's not gonna be two cubes inside your project. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna, the, the new cube that you just duplicated or copied, you're gonna to want to increase the size of that um, just a little bit so that it is bigger than the original cube. Then you're gonna select that inside uh, edit mode and you're gonna subdivide. So if you're not familiar with Blender, you may need a little bit of a Blender tutorial, but you can just rewind this video a couple times if you need to and just kind of follow steps here. You're gonna go into and add a modifier for shrink wrap. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is target the original cube that you uh, duplicated from inside your target setting. And then after that, you'll be able to start uh, using the offset and you're gonna start seeing the different bevel sizes you can do. Do it, you know, do whatever size you'd like and, and don't worry about the kind of the flat surfaces, the sharp surfaces here. You're gonna be able to, I'm gonna do it right now. You can actually smooth it out. So it's gonna look a lot cleaner when you're done. Um, you'll notice that this method has very few tries. And whereas like if you use the regular bevel modifier, you're gonna end up with a lot more um, uh, tries. So definitely use the shrink wrap uh, method if you can. And then you're gonna to wanna to export um, this into an FBX format so we can import it into Roblox Studio. And then you're gonna import that mesh that you just created. Um, I accidentally kind of left the original cube. You're gonna to wanna to, um, delete the other cube just because that's still gonna be just a straight up flat cube. I, I forgot to do it when I imported. Um, so here's the new cube. You can see it's pretty clean. It's actually a lot cleaner than the one I got, got off of the marketplace. I don't know, maybe someone didn't really use the same method I used. So their edges kind of got a little square. I don't know, it's not as clean, but this, this, this object here is way cleaner. And uh, you can go and delete the um, one for the marketplace if you are doing the Blender one. Otherwise, use the one for the marketplace. I don't care. It's the same thing. So here I'm going to change. I'm just going to kind of wing my pets here. I, I did not really plan what kind of uh, pet I wanted to make. So I'm just going to kind of wing this. And uh, I think I'm trying. I don't know. I'm, I want to. I like wedges. I like kind of the triangle stuff. So I'm going to create a wedge and just kind of go with it. I think we're going to I'm going to do something like maybe electrical or um, when you rotate, you can also rotate by 45 degrees. So I'm going to lock that to 45 degrees. I'm going to size it down. So I'm, I think this is probably just going to be like maybe part of his back or his tail. Again, kind of Pikachu inspired, but not directly. And um, I'm just going to duplicate these. You can use control um, D to duplicate. I'm just going to drag them a bit. All right, and now it's too wide. So I'm going to go and bring this down a little bit so it's not so wide because it is just way too wide and uh, then I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate and bring it in that's the nice thing about keeping it if you, if you can keep it to 45 degrees um, it's just easier when you're trying to build because you can just rotate everything so as long as you're as long as you're not doing weird angles if you try to do freeform you're not gonna have anything unified now I'm gonna go and change it to be kind of a yellowish um, now when you union you you have to um, click uh, use part color otherwise it's not going to change the color so be sure to go under the properties and click uh, use part color and then uh, I'm going to go and change this to neon because I want it to glow because glowing's cool I like glowing stuff and I don't want it super glowy so I'm going to bring it down the trick to not to the trick to reduce the bloom a bit is just bring the uh, your brightness down on the color and it'll reduce the bloom but keep it a little bit you can see here it's not so bright anymore the other thing you're going to have an issue with if you don't do this is if you don't weld your additional parts here he's gonna he's gonna fall apart so especially when he's trying to follow you um, when you when you create that now that's gonna be a separate tutorial if i create one um, on how to do a follow script but here you're gonna want to definitely um, weld your parts so that they don't fall off even though i, I can drag this 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 part around it's gonna it's gonna eventually lose 
its attachment or, or connection unless you weld it. I don't know. I think I'm going to add some kind of wing, but I don't really want to do traditional wings. I kind of want to stick with like the, the kind of, you know, mechanical feel to him. So I think I'm going to make him look a little bit B, like a B bolt, like an electrical B or something. I don't know. Again, I didn't really plan this pet. This is, I'm literally winging it for this tutorial. So I don't want it to look like I just created a wedge. So I'm gonna probably gonna add another part in here that just basically negates to make it look a little bit more interesting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna actually subtract this piece. So now I've got some wings. Kind of looks looks okay. It's a decent start. Decent start. Now I want to duplicate that. So all I got to do is uh, control D it and then rotate at a 45 degree. And then I'm just going to slide it over to the left. That way it's perfectly, let's see, I got to just move it over a little bit. There we go. So the only thing I'm missing now is a face. So I'm going to go and show you, you know, you, my process for creating a face. So go to, go over to Photoshop or whatever image editor you're using. And then uh, I think 256 by 256 is probably plenty for something like this. So, and, and you could probably even go smaller than that. I just kind of like my stuff sharp. So I'm just gonna create some kind of electrical bolt eyes just so it looks looks kind of electrical in a way. So just use the pen tool, it's easiest, cleanest. And then uh, I'm just gonna duplicate that, flip it, duplicate. I say duplicate wrong. Yeah, yeah, there we go. The eyes are a little too close, so I'm gonna just move them a little further away from each other. And then when we're ready, we're just gonna go and crop this. We're just gonna wanna make sure this is on a transparent background. So just knock out or delete that background and then uh, go ahead and save this out. Make sure you try to keep with the even numbers on your size of your image instead of odd numbers. And then uh, go ahead and export that to a PNG and we're gonna go ahead and import that. Same way we imported for the mesh. So now that I have my image, now I'm going to go and create a um, part for the decal. So we're gonna put this image in a decal. I'm gonna go ahead and move this part in. I'm gonna put it so it's square on the face and uh, we're gonna get this squared away. Now we're gonna add a decal to this part. And we'll set it transparent after. Just make sure uh, it's the it's on the correct face. So just make sure it's on the correct part. And then we're gonna go and um, copy from the Explorer, we're gonna copy our new Roblox ID for the asset that we just imported. So basically just right click on the asset and then copy and paste that into the texture spot. And then we're just gonna resize this part that I just added so that the eyes kind of get placed where I want them and have the proper, or this, the, at least the size that I want. And now you can see I already got, I kind of already have a face going, which is nice because I can always switch these um, these eyes out anytime I want. So if I want a happy face or a mad face, I can do that, I can do whatever I want with that. And then that way they're reusable. So all these, I can create tons and tons of eyes um, for my game and just repurpose those anytime I add new pets, I can, you know, kind of swap out eyes, I can swap out wings, I can swap out all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. And then, um, you know what, because of the decals, you can't really, you're not gonna be able to do any material changes. I'm gonna go and uh, redo these eyes to be using wedges. Since it's kind of it's kind of a triangular shape as it is, I might as well just make this a part. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And basically you can see, I'm just, I'm just kind of moving wedges in and I'm gonna kind of draw over and then I'm gonna just basically re recreate these eyes using parts. Now that we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just start uh, coloring these parts and make them look good. And then I'm going to set them to neon so I can have glowing eyes, which is kind of why I did this in the first place. And I'm going to set them to match the tail. And now the, th the here's the challenge. Okay, so if I duplicate this part, I can't rotate correctly. So what I use is a plugin called um, Tools by F3X. And they give you a lot more options for like rotation and movement so that things don't get kind of weird on an angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this tool to rotate 45 degrees. And then uh, we're gonna go slide this to the right and you can see I've got a clean duplicate eye. Now I just now I just need to uh, reapply that neon to the wings so that uh, things kind of match because we kind of lost that. All right, it looks pretty good. So now the only thing I wanna do um, which is left is I want to set up some effects because without effects, this thing kind of looks plain. So let's go ahead and get some handmade effects in here. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna drop in a particle emitter. It's gonna look a little funny. 
but don't worry because we're gonna we're gonna make this look way better we're gonna jump over to photoshop and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um i want to since this is kind of like an electrical like a yellow electrical character you know i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do like a handmade like electrical kind of visual using the uh, poly tool again i'm not it's not meant to look perfect but uh it's meant to work so just create a new layer um draw out whatever kind of effect that you want it to be and then we're going to replace the default texture that comes with the particle emitter with this electrical kind of style so our pet has kind of a yellow look so i'm just going to go ahead and make a yellow kind of electrical bolt this is this looks more like a, <laughs> i don't know what this looks like but but uh, it's still going to work for us because you know because it's going to be animating so fast and it's going to be colored and it's going to be glowing and you know you really don't need to see the detail of it and whenever you're done with the texture just go ahead and export that um, out as a png with no background and then what we're going to do is we're going to import the texture the same same as same way as you know we've, we've done for everything else we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and import that into roblox and then we go to the particle emitter and then we're going to swap out that texture id so again just right click on the newly imported image and copy that id and then paste it into your particle emitter so this looks kind of wild it looks like little skeleton hands right now which is fine we're gonna make some adjustments to transparency size and all that kind of stuff so that we can get some uh, good movement um, the other thing that's very important is to for natural kind of a look to the visuals you're gonna want to add some rotation to it because without rotation it looks really 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 plain so we're gonna bump up the size and then uh, we're gonna switch over to that rotation. You definitely wanna pump up the light emission a bit just to give it a little of that magical feel, not too much, but you definitely want that magic feel. And you also wanna switch the color so that it matches kind of our original glow. So things don't fit, they don't, they don't feel out of place. You know, you want it to fill in place. And then we're gonna switch over here. We're gonna add some rotation and speed. So basically rotation here, you're gonna, you're gonna notice that it just looks way more natural when it starts rotating. And so just, just play around with that a little bit till you, till you find some settings that you like. Lifetime, lifetime, um, you know, try to keep it shorter if you don't want it to go so far away from your, your pet, which I would recommend. It, it feels a little weird if it's just kind of floating out in space. So definitely try to keep it grounded and anchored to your pet. And then um, definitely check out a little bit of the transparency so that it feels like a little bit more natural on the fall off so that it's, it's not so bright and, and distracting from the actual pet. And now that we have the effect that's pretty good, I mean, it, it kind of works. Um, now we got the transparency correct and stuff. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that so we can spread it out to other parts of the pet. Cause otherwise it just, it's weird that it's just like a cube that's affected. We want the wings to kind of have some effects as well. Since it's glowing, it's, it's orange, it may as well have some effects to it. Again, you could, you could add effects to the eyes. You can change the colors of the effects on the eyes. You could do whatever you want, whatever your imagination uh, goes. Uh, as long as it's, you're not killing the performance of your game. Here is our finished model. Um, it, it's, the nice thing about this is it's as easy as that to just create additional pets now. So I hope this video was helpful for some of you who are looking to build your own pets inside your games. And even for those that are a little bit more seasoned, maybe there's a couple things that you hear that you didn't think about. I hope to make more videos like this for pets, including things like, you know, being able to create follow scripts and showing you how to build out your pet system. If you would like to see that, definitely uh, throw a comment in um, to let me know what you'd like to see um, in particular. And uh, if you did like the video again, I'm gonna be creating a lot more videos like this. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on those. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. I'm a VIP.